Hello, and thanks for tuning in again for another one of my hashtag 5VRs, 5D, 5 days videos. <laughs> Usually I save my be begging for the end, but this one could be quite a ramble. So if you like these, if you would like to see more content like this, not necessarily mine, but just like this, be sure to hit the like button, helps your alg algorithms, all that stuff. And if you could subscribe, that would be fabulous. You don't have to hit the notification bell unless you want to, but I would love to get fi just 500 subscribers so I can have comment section. Okay, on to this tag. So this tag, I believe it was, I'm pretty sure it got started by um, Simon over at the Hermit's Cave and it's called All About Tarot 2022. And I decided to just ramble with this one because five days of, of videos is a lot for me. <laughs> so um, yeah, this could be a bit of a ramble, but so I've got my notes, here we go. My first deck and how I encountered it. So my first deck was actually just a straightforward uh, Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, I encountered it because I was studying herbalism. So this would be the late 80s, uh, I mean 1990-ish. And I was frequenting this store that sold um, dried herbs loose, you know, by weight. And they had a sort of magic key section. And I saw these tarot decks and I just picked one up. I and mean, it was like a kit. It came with a, a cloth that had a Celtic cross layout on it and a, a guidebook. And I was doing Celtic cross every day for a while. Just a lot of time when I think about it now. But it makes sense given what was going on in my life at that point. I had the time at that point although I was employed, but all right. Anyway, my last deck and how my changes, how my tastes have changed since my first. Okay, I told you this is gonna be a ramble. I don't have everything right, right at hand. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure that this is the last most recent purchase acquisition I made. So I'm not gonna do a side by side. I think most of you are familiar at this point with um, what the Rider Waite Smith with Pamela Coleman Smith's illustrations looks like. So, yeah, completely different color palette. This one is about fairies, right? Um, mostly female characters in this deck. As you can see, I've been reading with reversals on this one. <laughs> and I've shuffled it rather well, too. Yeah. So uh, that's this deck, and here's the back, if you haven't seen it, I think the back is just exquisite. So how have my changes, how have my tastes changed since then? Um, wow, they've changed a lot. So at the time that I picked up that first RWS deck, I was much more okay with, uh, Ugh. organized religion with Catholicism, with Judaism, with, you know, the brick and mortar dogma of those religions. I was just, I was more okay with them than I am now. Um, and I would say that that period of time in my life was the beginning of my, I was obvious, well, not obvious, but I was always leaning towards being a feminist. There were a lot of things that I believed, like I was actually in high school when Title IX was passed and I was all over, you know, girls should be able to participate in athletics, our athletics should be funded. And uh, it just, it kind of exploded <laughs> after, through the 90s, it, what, late 80s, 90s, and then obviously into this century. I guess I'm old. Um, yeah, I'm much more of a feminist now. I'm not okay with all of that religions, religious uh, symbolism. I'm just taking that if it's face value, just, whew, you know, I'm just, I'm anti-hauling my uh, heaven and earth deck. I'm much more into earth 
centered spiritual practices and I like that to be reflected in my decks, uh, which it is in this one. And very much uh, F the patriarchy. There, F the patriarchy. If I ever do a deck, maybe that's what I'll call it. <clears throat> and you can't get around the fact that RWS is very traditional and supports, in my opinion, it supports the patriarchy. So I can't even imagine using the actual RWS deck. Although I read the RWS system, that's my favorite system. I'm, I'm evolving into why tarot and some of the other questions, but it, this is a free form conversation with myself. <laughs> um, so I can't even imagine really using that in a serious reading, although I obviously studied it and I went back and studied it again and again um, so that I could really be fluent with it. But I, I don't, I don't like the imagery. I don't use it. Um, but here's the thing. I believe that if enough people have an accepted meaning for something or have accepted a construct, a concept, then I do believe in the collective unconscious. So if I am working with an RWS system deck, then I believe that I am tapping in to millions of people around the world who accept the basic concept of heartbreak. They accept the basic concept of um, the Ten of Wands carrying this huge burden. That is a concept. Um, now what you do with it, how you depict it, could be a lot of different things. Or let's take the Five of Pentacles, right? The, the, uh, the two figures, they're outside a church. The light's on in the church. It's cold. It's like little match girl kind of a situation. And they are not going into the church for assistance and support. They're outside for whatever reason. Well, you know what? The church has not exactly been a warm, welcoming place for everybody. So while I can accept the concept of there is love and support and uh, a nurturing place to be, and sometimes you're not there for a variety of reasons and you're suffering, I can accept that as a concept. I do not like the way it is illustrated with the church and the, you know, the hooded beggary kind of people outside. Not, no. And I also am not good with this whole kings and queens, masculine, feminine thing. I'm just not. I think that there's rulers and nurturers, you know, pe people who go out on quests, uh, fresh young things who are bursting with energy, uh, ready to learn something new. Uh, but slapping a specific gender on those things, no, no thank you. Not, not there for it. And all of that is built into the RWS and why I'm not comfortable with that. Is iconography the right word? Well, symbolism, the way it's depicted. It, does, it just doesn't work for me. All right, that was a lot. Three, why tarot? Why not? I kind of feel like that's my answer. <laughs> well, why not? Um, why? For me, it's because I can pick up a deck and I can just get an answer. Well, why would I not want to do that? <laughs> and um, I think that the answer is coming from a lot of different places. Sometimes it's just coming straight from inside me. And sometimes I feel like the answer is coming from outside of me, that I'm getting messages. And um, that seems so immodest to say that, but uh, I think just there's no other explanation for it sometimes. It's just to say, well... That didn't come from inside me. That just came somehow. So I just feel like this cards, uh, tarot cards are the medium for me. And I include oracle cards in that category. And I think a lot of people do at this point. Think of when you say tarot, tarot they think tarot oracle. And they may even think tarot oracle, the Normand playing cards. You know, they may sort of go into several things. All right, that was question three. You know how many questions there are? 13. Strap in. Get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea. I got one, see? Let's have a sip. 
you probably use that little brake to hit the like button, right? <laughs> okay, number four, tarot pet peeves. Okay, I've got two tarot pet peeves. Number one is gatekeeping, you know, and the two extremes of that are, uh, oh, I only read intuitively. I, I don't burden myself with fixed meetings. Uh, that's one extreme, and the other extreme is, well, if you haven't really spent 20 years studying these systems, well, you just shouldn't even call yourself a card reader. You have no right to go out and charge money for this. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not okay with those extremes. Um, it, both of them are a form of gatekeeping. I'll just call that right now. Sorry if you fell into one of those camps. Broaden your mind. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that's just sort of a general way of saying my way or the highway, isn't it? My way's right, your way's not right. Which is a, a variation on othering. The others, those people out there who are different from me. You really only hurting yourself with that one. Sorry, that got a little bit lectury, but that is a pet peeve of mine. My favorite tarot spread. Okay, I don't have a favorite tarot spread per se. I use a lot of tarot spreads, but the shape that I use most often is a three card spread. And I use, I'm getting to a page that's not written on because I don't, don't want to out my own self. Um, so I use the Ritual Planner. And there's two versions of it available this year. Um, a one card diary and a three card. So I use this one, the three card. Um, and then if I don't use three cards, I usually use three at least and sometimes four or five, which I squeeze in underneath. I use this format. Uh, yeah, I have Witch Oracle up there because it was supposed to be delivered in September. I'm not getting it in September, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, what was I going to say about this? Oh, yes. So there's a lot of different things you can do with a three-card spread. A lot of different things that you can do. I very rarely use past, present, future. I do um, a mind, body, spirit a lot. Sometimes I use it just as like a storytelling. Like, I'm just going to tell a story. And I just pull out three cards and I tell the story with those three cards. That's sort of a loose thing I do. Sometimes I will make up something on the spot based on what I'm trying to work out when I'm puzzling through. Um, there's the energy obstacle advice one. I use that sometimes. Anyway, there's a ton of three card spreads, so I'm not gonna go through all of them. I'll just say that that is the shape that I like. I'll put that down over here. Have another sip of tea. My preferred tarot system. My preferred tarot system is RWS. Although, as I already told you in length, uh, I don't care for the symbology of the traditional uh, Rider Waite Smith, Pamela Coleman Smith's imagery. I don't. I got nothing against her art. I just don't like the images depicted therein. Uh, if I was going to study another tarot system, I would definitely go for the Marseille. Tarot rituals. Well, that is a lovely question, and it's interesting because I brought it up in a discussion group, and I'm, I'm really glad that it's on this one, so I'm definitely going to be looking at other people's videos. So if you do a video, be sure to leave it in my comments so I can find it and, and hit your like button. <laughs> like! Uh, right, so what do I do? Um, I do this kind of really fast, abbreviated thing. First of all, I coast on the fact that whatever I do, whatever sort of ritual I've done in the morning when I got up, that's carrying through for the whole day. That's, I coast on that a little bit. Um, but specifically, I always take a moment to breathe, to ground, to put my two feet flat on the floor and to imagine, you know, the roots going all the way down into other earth. Uh, sometimes I will do a calling quarters, but not a really formal one with specific words. I'll just turn to the east, which I'm lucky. My little room here, it's, it is actually the corners. I can go east, west, um, south, west, and north. I can, I can go around. Um, so I, I usually do that. And if I do that, then I, uh, when I close, I let go of the corners. So, and if I 
if I'm I'm feeling feeling it, I'll, I'll light a candle. Oh, and I frequently will get out a crystal. Yeah, so I guess I have more ritual than I thought I did. Number eight, how do you use tarot? Introspection, divination, etc. That introspection, divination, and it's and etc. <laughs> And sometimes I just look at the cards for fun because they're pretty. All right, your significator card and why you feel it represents you. I don't really feel like doing this one, <laughs> but I'm going to. My significator card is the Queen of Pentacles, and that is from my ast astrological sun sign. Um, but my rising sign is the Queen of Wands, and I'm feeling that a lot these days. Uh, and sometimes I'm feeling kind of nine of pentacles-ish. Uh, if I had prepared, I would pull those cards out for you. Maybe I'll look, I'll look in the everyday witch while I'm talking. Um, those I feel sort of capture my character. Um, now in the Spirit Keepers Tarot, she actually has three significator cards that you can choose depending on what questions you have to ask. So that's kind of handy. And I have actually pulled those specific significator cards out of the Spirit Keepers Tarot to use with other decks sometimes when I just wanted to pull in that energy. Sorry, I'm just looking down and not at you because I'm looking through this deck real quick. Okay, so here's the Queen of Wands. This is what I've been feeling uh, lately. I feel like I'm in a uh, very creative, passionate phase of my life. And here's my Queen of Pentacles, which I think is sort of me just kind of by nature. Um, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having that energy as much. And this is vacation me. <laughs> and you know what? I try to take a little vacation every day. Whoops, sorry, I banged the camera. Um, so let's, let me show you these, because maybe, I think a lot of you maybe have the deck, but don't even use it, but uh, even more if you don't have the deck. So let's just show you these, because this may be a concept you want to use. So the first one I'm going to show you is Seeker, uh, spirit in search of science. So for Benbo, when the first card, what we think of as the Fool card, um, that is the ultimate significator. So what she's done is she'd made three versions of this card, and those are your significators. So that's the first one. The second one is the Initiate, Spirit in Search of Experience. And then the third one is the Keeper, Spirit in Petition of Spirit. And I feel like those concepts and these images are extremely powerful. And so that's why I will sometimes pull one of these significator cards. I actually made um, photocopies onto uh, card stock that I keep separate for that use. So sometimes that's, I will use those um, as my, as my um, significator card. Hang on just a second. Oops, that's not good. Also, I'm, I'm pulling it back out because, sorry, I dropped the cards and I, these cards are too precious. You can't leave them on the floor. And I'm not going to edit that out. Sorry, guys. Um, some of these uh, decks like this will actually have a little something built into it um, that you can use as a ritual to go back to ritual. Some of them will actually have something that you can use to, to to use as your ritual, right? Did that make sense? Did I explain that? I think I did. Okay, so let me put that down. Yeah, all right, that's good. Next question. <laughs> ritual, significator, ah, 10. Most expensive tarot acquisition. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, wait a second, I do. And I don't think you can even get this anymore. Not in this format. It's the Charm Cast Tarot. So I have the original Charm Cast Tarot, which uh, the charms are in metal 
and I bought the necklace that went with it. So if you haven't seen this one, you, you get these, um, you get a, the full tarot deck and it's stick figure RWS. So that gets rid of some of the problems I have <laughs> with, with the right away Smith. So here is uh, this one. Uh, this was my poll for the week this week. I'm reminding myself to only carry my burdens and not other people's burdens, which is something the Queen of Pentacles can do. So that's a good reminder for me. So you have this necklace and then you have a set of these metal things and they click in, right? Um, so she's not making it in metal anymore because it was so freaking expensive. Um, now, now they are available in some kind of plastic or resin something, but uh, they look like this, right? So when I use them, and I pretty much only use them as my weekly draw, I just, you know, pick one at random. Very, very official and ritualistic. No, not really. <laughs> but I do do it in community, so that kind of helps. All right. Uh, my unicorn deck, the deck that's just so hard to find. Well, there is no deck that's hard to find that I really, really, really want because I know it so well. So I don't, there is no real answer to that question. I mean, I could say Robert Place's um, uh, vampire deck, but I've never actually held one. Uh, so it's just kind of theoretical. I mean, if it ever comes out mass market, I'll definitely pick it up, but I, there's nothing that I would go out and on search for eBay, search on eBay and, you know, pay hundreds of dollars for. No, there's nothing out like that. Okay, number 12. We're getting there, folks. What is the most important lesson the tarot has taught you? Let's have another sip and you can hit the like button. <laughs> oh, tasty tea, although it is cooling off. Um, the most important lesson that Tarot has taught me. The most important lesson that Tarot has taught me is that I am much more connected and that the universe, whatever you want to call it, is willing to communicate with me in a way that I had lost. It was something I very much believed and felt up through my 20s, mid to late 20s, and then I lost the connection. And tarot has brought it back, which is a, uh, a relief, it's a huge relief, um, and a real joy. Uh, just that feeling of connectedness, that feeling of communication uh, between me and myself, between me and the world outside of myself, between me and other people. It's that, that communication and connection. Okay, this is a good one. Tarot dinner party guests. One guest of honor plus two other guests, dead or alive. All right, first of all, I had to decide it's got to be dead. I don't want to offend any, many, anybody. There are too many living people that I would love to just sit down and have a chat with. But if I just picked three, well, then, then there's the others, you know. Okay, a three wouldn't be enough. Okay, so it has to be dead. So here's what we're going to start with. The guest of honor is going to be Madame Lenormand. I would love to talk to her. I would love to find out what she thinks about the fact that there are all these decks out there being called Lenormand decks, which she actually never used those kind of decks. That would be an interesting take. But I would like to know what it was exactly that she used. And then following on that, the other two people I would want at my dinner party don't have names. We don't know who they are, which is so true of all of her story, all, but not just her story, but all of the under, under, under documented people who have lived. Um, it's like for Western civilization, well, if it wasn't written down, then we don't know. Um, so there would be a lot of people there, uh, or out there that I would want to talk to, but I don't know who they are. I wouldn't know who to call in. I would have to just sort of open it up to who wants to come have a chat, but I am looking for specifically somebody who might have used an Italian tarot deck 
uh, like this one. Uh, so that would be pulling in some ancestral energy, and I'm pretty convinced that I have got somebody, I'm not so sure about my about one side of my family, but the Italian side, I am really convinced that there were people on that side of the family that uh, had cultivated their clairs and used them. Uh, definitely feel that. And if I could find somebody in my lineage who had used tarot uh, hundreds of years ago, I would love to have them at my dinner table. And hopefully they can speak English now. If not, I would like to miraculously be able to speak Italian. So that would be my second guest. And my third guest would be a woman from either what we think of as the UK or Northeast America who used playing cards for divination um, purposes. Um, and that would be, you know, a wise woman, a healer, an herbalist, whatever euphemistic name she went by. Then some people would have thought of her as a witch, no doubt. Um, so yeah, that would be my third person at my table. And I would really enjoy that conversation. I would enjoy the mix of them talking to each other from these different points in history. And I would enjoy learning something about the practice of cardamancy that is under-documented. So that would be fun with me. I think that was my last question. Yeah, I did it. Ding, ding. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in. If you got to the end of this video, I'm gonna do a card pull for you. Very spur of the moment. Let's see, what shall I use? What shall I use? What shall I use? Okay, I was talking about uh, how I'm sort of earth-centered, not loving the RWS. So, I mean, using RWS system, but not always loving that imagery. So we're gonna pull something from the Herb Crafters Tarot. And today, I can't think of what today's date is. All right, it's late August, 2022. And if you can hear noise, it's because the landscapers pulled up across the street and they're, they're going at it. They've got at least three, three machines running right now. I don't get it, me with my little electric mower and very little grass. It's not good for the environment. I'm feeling lechery today. Okay. So, that is my belief. And I am going to pull. Oh yeah, let's let's do our ritual, shall we? Okay, so all that shuffling still counts. So we're gonna go to the east. We're gonna call in the elements. You can do it with whatever word you want to use. The east. Oops. South. West. North. Grounding down. Big breath. Now, I've got so much stuff on the table. All right. So I'm gonna do the whole deal. So I'll shuffle it now after I've called in my elements. And then <clears throat> with my non-dominant hand, I make three piles. Still using my non-dominant hand, I'm gonna pull a card. And I got Madre of Water. <clears throat> so this is the what you would think of as the Queen of Cups. Here it is oats. <clears throat> oats are a very soothing um, grain. Uh, that is why you will find it in, uh, sometimes you'll find it in face products. Some people uh, use it for baths, like, um, what's that brand, Aveeno, uses a lot of oat in their um, lotions and bath products. And it's very soothing that this would be um, a water card so I'm, I'm just looking at the imagery so I can talk about it a little bit look at the at the mug with the uh, fish or dolphin tail could be a mammal could be a fish I'm not sure what it is a lot of water there and because the artwork is what it is I can't be a hundred percent on what what where what what herb is in there so I'm gonna look that up but 
see that we've got my seashells here and she's scooping something out. She's making a tincture and enjoying a nice cup of tea. And here we've got the symbols that are used in this deck. So M is the madre and that little squiggle is the water sign. So let's just do a quick read. Where did I put the guidebook? Here it is. And then we'll end with that. Madre of Oats. Okay, Madre is mother. So instead of queen, but you get the idea. And I would say this energy could also be exhibited in a man, right? It's about love, nourishment, guidance. So, got it. Oh yes, Avina Satvia is the uh, Latin botanical name. So Avina, Avinu is that uh, brand name, right? Uh, so here's our message. Let the mother of water soothe your soul. Release anxiety by nourishing body and spirit. Open your heart and let your intuition flow. <coughs> I'm gonna just hold up the card so you can look at it while I read. Okay, I'll try to hold still. Fresh oat straw infusion brews on a sunny windowsill above a table holding a well-worn bottle of tincture and a jar full of oat tops. Oh, okay, those are the oat tops. A woman holds her mug, its handle shaped like a whale's tail, and enjoys a fresh cup of tea while looking towards the sea. Steam rises to an altar filled with ocean treasures. The Madre of Water is a master of self-care. She is kind and gracious to others because she is kind and gracious to herself. As oat straw replenishes the land, she takes time to rest. By doing so publicly, she inspires others to do the same. She plants oats in the garden each year to replenish and fortify the soil. She feels full and complete after a day of good work. She understands the power of oat straw and delights in the calming medicine it provides. She knows healing takes time and she has faith in her daily cup of tea. Just as oats soothe frazzled emotions, the madre of water transforms tension into healing. Embrace your emotions. They expand your capacity for compassion. Okay, my arm's tired. <laughs> Drink oat straw. Here's your crafting with the Madre of Water. Drink oat straw infusion every day for emotional nourishment. Take an oatmeal bath to nourish the body. Feed oat seeds to squirrels or chickens or grow them in your garden to nourish the earth. So probably the easiest for a lot of you would be to take an oatmeal bath. And if you can't take a bath, you can always take a foot bath. You can always just put some water in a, a basin or even a bowl. If you probably got something, you can just take a foot bath. And you don't have to have an oatmeal bath uh, product. You can just use oatmeal. So if you wanted to do that, here's what I would suggest you do. Cook a little oatmeal, put it in a bag if you can, so that you don't have a big mess to clean up and then put that in your warm water um, and then you'll get it that way. That's the easiest way to do it. And if you want a nice little fragrance for the, you could just put a spritz of your perfume or if you have an essential oil you like, just a drop of that. Don't do too much because essential oils can irritate the skin if you're not familiar with what you are good with. All right, I hope that was interesting and fun and a little helpful thing at the end if you wanted to. Uh, put a little ritual into your life today. Take care. Bye-bye.